Hello everyone and welcome back to another OpenGL screencast. This is number 13, still talking about lighting and material, and this is actually part two. I can change that. And we're talking about a little bit more about material today. Um, sorry about the delay of updates. Grad school was rather busy, so let's get right into it. Um, this is the main in uh, 13.c. Uh, we got a couple of screencast specific things going on, um, mostly just setting up our view. So we can close that out, and let's get right into it. So we are in the draw light function here. Uh, most of this should be familiar from last time. Uh, a couple things that we're doing here is I am redraw, uh, reorganize a little bit of these uh, functions here that I talked about last time. Um, and then I have this little section here that I said, in general, I don't like splitting code like this, but these are for the screencast. So um, what this is doing is if we're not in this particular episode, we are using these functionality right here. And so uh, specular lighting has to deal with the second and third columns in the app that I'm about to show you. A, the color material is another way to use materials. So I will probably explain that in, uh, well, I'll explain it right now. So this particular one is going to enable color material which is instead of material FV, which I'll show you down below. Um, and then you set color, uh, so this one's front and back for, for both the buffers, GL ambient and diffuse. So you can go ahead and draw, um, use GL color, and that'll actually set be set based off uh, the, uh, this particular thing. So you could set your ambient and diffuse at the same time, writing GL color, uh, three if you know and then some three numbers so you know that would set the ambient and diffuse uh, rather than using material um, FE which I'll show you below the main reason you want to do this is for performance um, it's a little bit faster so generally you want to use this but it's uh, what it's going to do is it's going to set a single material parameter um, at a time, so normally GL ambient, then you'll set it, and then you'll just GL diffuse, and then you'll set that for different GL color, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for that particular material parameter for most your vertices across the entire scene. And that's what my comment here says. So anyway, um, we're not using that in this particular screencast, and I'll show you exactly what happens if we try to. So. Um, down here in screencast 13 we are going to draw our light and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw 12 spheres this may be familiar to you um, this is a lot of copy code actually at this type time I'm just like I said cruncher time out of the OpenGL red book which is an excellent resource if you don't have it um, it's worth reading cover to cover and so I'm just going to draw a bunch of uh, spheres here based off glut uh, sphere and here's that material uh, that I was telling you about. So basically we have uh, 12 spheres, 3 rows, 4 columns. The top row is going to be about no ambience. Uh, so you can see here the second row is significant ambient. And the last one is colored material with ambient. Um, each column will have a different thing going on. This one is diffuse reflection for the first column. Second one has specular uh, with low shininess. Third has specular with high shininess, and the fourth has an emissive component. So we'll go ahead and make it real quick. And go ahead and show you what's going on. So we have our light source here. As always, it can be it can move around, so that's the, you know the difference between my code and the red books. And you can kind of see what's going on. So like we said. Uh, across the top here are these all have just uh, no ambient reflection at all these have ambient reflection and these have colored ambient reflection so you know we can change that ambient reflection to be zero and these look a lot more similar but if we the more we bring it up the greater contrast you can see based off that ambient um, the fuse reflection for the first column so, you know, bring down the diffuse and you can really see, look, it's gone, you know, gone completely now. So even with 100% ambience. So uh, very significant for having 
no ambient reflection and diffuse only. If you drop that down to zero, you're not going to get much uh, material on that. So, uh, specular will affect mostly these other two here. Um, and it's actually really not that significant because I have the specular off. Um, so, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'll go ahead and add these other two back and I'll show you exactly what happens here. So if we go ahead and throw this specular on and let's close that out and we make and draw that there. Now you can see that because the, these guys react to the specular they look identical now. So all three of these being the exact same. So you know that's something to consider if you're using light or just uh, material. So let's see, keep it there. And if we're going to do these two, you'll really get a kick out of this one. Now you can see that they are all pretty close to the same, except for, you know, this the fourth column over here. But in general, they are all different because we're not using the color specifically, like I said. So, um, in general, like I said, I, I prefer these because um, I'm going to end up using texture maps anyway, which is going to be a topic in a near uh, screencast. And when you're using textures, you don't end up using as many uh, materials, or at least in my experience, that's been the case. So I think that's what I got for you guys today. You go ahead and play with these different materials and uh, take a look if you want to see what the actual colors here I did, or excuse me, rays I did for these materials, uh, the ambient, ambient color, diffuse, etc. Go ahead and check those out. And I hope this has been beneficial to you today. And I'll see you guys again soon.